You could buy your dad a gift at the store for Father's Day, but that doesn't have the same meaning as something you make yourself. My kids have made me a few things over the years, and those are the ones that I have the fondest memories of. So in this video, I'm going to share some of my ideas for Father's Day gifts. I'll show you how I made this caddy, this cutting board, and this wall-mounted bottle opener. Let's start with the mounted bottle opener, because it's the most simple to make. All you really need is a slab of wood, a bottle opener, and some magnets. This is a really nice piece of spalted maple, so I didn't want to cover up the front with a tray to catch the lids. So I'm using magnets for lid catching. I did all the planing and cutting off camera. There wasn't anything out of the ordinary there. Then I used a countersink bit to pre-drill the holes for mounting this on the wall. For the magnets, I get my smallest Forstner bit and drill some shallow holes along the bottom half of the back side of the board. Now I have a place I can put the magnets. So I mix up some epoxy to hold them in place and start trying to place the magnets. That proved difficult. I thought the epoxy, once mixed, would be sticky enough to keep the magnets in their spot while I put them all in place. But some of them were not playing nice and it ended up getting a little messy. These magnets really wanted to get together. Next time, I would use CA glue to tack the magnets in place, one by one, then mix the epoxy and cover them over. Eventually that all dried and I sanded it smooth. And that should be enough magnets to take care of any bottle caps. It's time to attach the bottle opener. and then take it off again so I can sand it for a while. And then I'll add some water-based ferrothane. That ferrothane really brought out the grain. Now I can just put the opener back on and call it done. I like the look of this one, and it's really simple to make. The cutting board is another project that's fairly simple to make, but there's a little more to it than the bottle opener. This piece of walnut has a knot in the middle, so I need to get rid of that. Now I can trim off just a bit of the edges to get them as square as possible for glue later. While I'm at the table saw, I also trim the edges for the remaining boards. Now it's time to glue it all together, and to do this, I decided to get a couple of clamps that are designed for the job. These are great for joining boards together. Trying this with my other clamps always ended up with a bit of a mess. Though I did end up using one more of the older clamps to help hold the middle together. I let that dry overnight, and the next day, I took off the clamps to see how it turned out. It looked pretty good to me, so now I just need to plane it all down to the same thickness. Using the crosscut sled, I can trim off the ends and even square up the sides a bit. It's all ready for sanding now. This is a good chance to put the new sanding station to work. I progressed through the grits as usual, and when I reached 220, I got the board a little wet so the grain will raise up. Then sanded it again to get it as smooth as possible. And much like the charcuterie board from a couple of weeks ago, if you don't do this part now, the first time you wash the board, It'll become rough to the touch, and all that sanding will have been for nothing. When the sanding was all done, I added some mineral oil. And, later, some wax as well. This one ended up looking great. I like the purple heart stripe through the two spalted maple pieces, and the dark walnut in there for some contrast. Two relatively quick and simple gift ideas, done. The next one's a little more work, but it's worth it. This one starts off with the bottom piece. It's just going to be some scrap plywood left over from the sanding station. In fact, the ends will be made from this as well. And to get the desired shape, I designed something I liked in SketchUp, then printed it and cut it out, and then glued it to the ends that have already been cut to width. Now I can stick the two pieces together with some double-sided tape. This tape works really well, but it's so difficult to take the backing off. I 
Eventually I got it all off and put the two pieces together. Now I can move over to the bandsaw and cut them both at once so they're exactly the same. I did stay just off the waist side of the line a little bit so that I could use the belt sander to finish it all off and get it right to the edge of the paper. I wanted to paint the two sides of these pieces to try to hide the plywood layers. I thought black paint would hide them the best and look good in the end. But I don't have any black paint. Well, not standard black paint anyway. I do have some very old chalkboard paint, so I thought I'd give it a try. After taping off the front and back to avoid making a mess, I applied the chalkboard paint to the edges. Now while I let those dry, there's another part that I wanted to paint. For the handle, I'm using some old PVC pipe. I cut some to my desired length and then give it a good sanding. Then I'll take it outside and spray paint it with some silver paint I found laying around. All the painted stuff is drying now, so I can work on the pieces for the inside that keep the bottles from clanging together. This is just some scrap left over from the drawer bottoms from the cabinet build. I cut these to size and then use the crosscut sled to cut slots in them so they'll fit together in a grid. Now for the strips on the sides, I found a piece of reclaimed barn wood that would be perfect if it were a bit thinner, so I ran it through the bandsaw to get it to the size I was looking for. I sanded those off camera and then checked on the paint on the end pieces. It was dry enough to add the shallow hole for the handle. Now I have all my parts cut to size, but I wanted to add something to the ends with the laser etcher. Now I can just add some varathane to protect the etching, and some for the side bits as well. After letting that dry, I put it all together with glue and brad nails. I think that chalkboard paint worked out really well. And this looks pretty good for something made entirely of scraps that I found in the shop. Three relatively simple projects that can be made in one weekend, and would make a great gift for Father's Day or any other gift-giving occasion. You might even make one of these for yourself. I think I may end up keeping the cutting board for myself. Click here to see some more gift ideas.